Hi, hi. How are you guys? So good. So good to see you. Really nice to see you. How many have had a little bit of a challenging week? Anybody take their kids to college? Welcome back, Kevin and Lee. You guys got to do that yesterday. Na, 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 na. We got to do it the week before. You know what's really sad to me is when they leave and they're okay. <laughs> Levi didn't just walk away from us. He walked away from us with style. <laughs> he, see, your greatest successes are also, can be, your greatest pain. You know, you raise them up. You know, they're with you one day, and they're completely dependent upon you. And then they're gone. And you go, how come you're not dependent upon me? Oh, because you raised me right. You know? So this whole parenting thing, really enjoy it while they're home. We, now, Lisa and I, we got a little excited last night because we heard a car pulling up into our driveway. Um, and her heart leapt because, oh, Levi's home. But he, he wasn't. You know, Ember, Ember, our dog, she was home. And, but I, I will say that we have a greater appreciation for Ember. She's taking Levi's place? I don't know that she's taking Levi's place. Um, but I just, you know, it's like, you know, it's, it, loss gives you the ability to appreciate gains. You know, and, and, and it's like, I, it like, Always focusing on what you don't have or what's leaving you will always detract from what, you, what is staying and what you have. So, so Kellen, you have large shoes to fill, but you're going to be well-loved because Ben's well-missed. <laughs> He's going. Yeah. Ari said, you know, she goes, right, um, she goes, wow, even I miss Levi. interpret that any way that you want to. But, but these connections, these connections that the Lord really wants us to have are, they are the most important thing to him. God only cares. This, this, is gonna, this is gonna sound, he cares about our temporal things, but it's because he cares so much of our eternal things. And the only things that are eternal are him and us. That's why everything hangs. Everything hangs. It doesn't hang on the stuff. It doesn't hang on buildings, homes, cars, careers. It hangs on this. Everything hangs on this. And you'll know, you'll know that this is real when this is real and this is real. And that's why we're doing this series. And the series, The Love Connection, is all about having healthy connections with God. How many want that? Having healthy connections with ourselves, how many need that, right? Why? So that we actually can have healthy connections with each other. So many disconnections are because disconnections with other people stems from this thing we're going to talk about today, about the disconnection that I have within myself. And I want to, I'm, going to, I'm going to get into that shortly, but here's what in this series we want you to get. God says about real love in each area. He wants us to know real love with regards to him. He wants us to know what it looks like to really love ourselves. But for the explicit purpose of, he wants us to experience what it is to love each other. Because out of that is the full expression of what he intended by loving us first. Everybody with me on that? He loves you so well so that you can be a representative of his love so well. Not, not only back to him, but from him to you, through you, to them. And our, and our issues, guys, our issues, 
It's not that you don't love your wife well enough. It's not that you don't love your husband well enough. It's not that you don't love your children well enough. It's not that you don't love your family well enough. It's not that you don't love those around you that are like you, and it's not that you don't love those around you that are not like you. What we're learning, you're beautiful. I always wanted one of those spouts. That's why I keep putting my hair up this way every week. Um, but what, what, what he's trying to teach us is, hey, Scott, your issue is not that you're not loving well. Your issue is you've never learned to be loved well. Because you can't give what you don't have. So our hope is, is that 1 John 4.19 will be our experience. Our love for others will be a grateful response to the love that God first demonstrates to us. And this is important. You knowing that God loves you is important. It's, it's vital. But you experiencing God's love is the most important thing that we need to give to every, everyone deserves. <laughs> everyone deserves to encounter God's love. Everyone deserves to be loved by their father. Everyone. I'm crying. I have experienced it. But I want to I tell you that experiences will leave you lesser if you don't go through a process to experience a greater experience of the same thing you just experienced. To be loved by your father once is not sufficient because this thing that he has is, an, is not an event. It is a lifestyle of learning. It's called worship. Worship is where I'm so, I'm so aware of his love towards me that I release that love right back to him. And out of that, I learn how to love myself, which allows me to love other people appropriately. And my lack in a loving other people appropriately is a direct reflection of my lack in my ability to position myself and posture myself to be loved appropriately from him so I can love him back appropriately and understand who I really am so I can love me appropriately. See, because when I'm loved inappropriately, my, my growth is stunted. My maturity is stunted. So let's get into this. This is supposed to be a really encouraging message today, by the way. I just, I, the, thing that, the thing is, is that I hate this topic. Brene Brown, Sean's mom, um, Oh, sorry, Marta. Marta, no, no. No. That's a very high compliment, by the way. She's a brilliant lady. Brene Brown is too. But Marta's a brilliant lady. Did you see, you picked up? Did you feel that, Marta? Okay. So I'm learning how to love better, Marta. I'm learning. Brene Brown, I define connection as the energy, this thing, this, this thing that we feel between people. When, when this happens, when I'm with somebody and I feel seen, what I feel like. When I'm with someone and I feel heard, what that feels like. When I'm with someone and I feel valued, that's the connection we're all looking for. And, and so if that's the connection we're all looking for, then this is the connection we need to provide. We need to let people feel like they're seen when they're around us, that they're heard when they're around us, and that they're valued when they're around us. Why? Because whatever I release is what I'm going to receive. Whatever I cast out on the water is actually what's going to come back. So stay with me. This is why I hate this message. So when, when, when they can give and receive without judgment and when they can derive sustenance and strength from that relationship, this is what Brene Brown d- describes as connection. Sean did a great job last week for those of you who are here. Yeah, Sean did a great job last week for those of you who are here. And uh, on this thing, this, 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 the message was about first love how God loved us first and how his love inspires us and and that because we're inspired, we want to spend time with him and that everything, say this with me, everything Everything. stems from our view of how God views us. So today, I get to do this topic that I am now an expert on because I spent two weeks (laughs) preparing for what I'm going to share with you today and, um, and I spent this time in delivering my son. Then we went on vacation. And I spent this time in 96-degree weather to come back to 66-degree weather. Bright, sunshiny skies. Woke up this morning to fog. I want to just propose this to you. 
that whenever anything is in conflict, fog is created. When heaven is colliding with earth, when warmth is colliding with, with cold, when those two things, Nate, no, no, Nate's not up there. I like looking up there, though. When in doubt, look up. Wow. Whenever we're in collision with anything, a fog can be created. However, all that's needed is for you to rise above the point of collision, get a little bit above it, and it all clears up. Does that make, does that make sense? So, so I want to I talk about self-love because I want to begin... That is, that is our topic today, but I want to tell you what is not our topic today. I don't want to learn what it means to be selfish. I don't want to bring self-harm. I don't want to be self-centered. I don't want to be self-absorbed. I don't want to learn to be a self-preservationist. I don't want to be self-seeking. And I also don't want to be self-sabotage. I'd like to say that I am absolutely not an expert on any of on this subject. However, I am an expert on every one of these. Now, I'm being involved when I'm talking to you about me. But, but for me, you know, I didn't really have to learn to be selfish. That came pretty easy. I didn't have to go into a class. I didn't have to go to Journey Academy or Journey University to learn how to be selfish. I, 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 am, I am fighting for a culture that brings self-injury and self-harm to itself. But here's the reality is, I do this to myself constantly. By choices and decisions I make, I put me in harm's way. I'm just talking about me. You take whatever, you know, whatever, whatever if it fits. And if it doesn't fit, take it off. I'm remo- they don't smell. Oh, no. I love me. My feet, never mind. So, Levi's feet. How, no, it's okay. So, I don't want to learn. See, I, I've learned in my life that obviously everything should revolve around me. I've learned in my life that I'm really, that's all the only thing that's important. I've learned in my life how to protect myself. I've learned in my life how to be self-serving, seeking, or serving. Yeah, either one, even if I can't, you know, I can spell. I'm a great speller. But this thing right here, this is kind of my default. Because this is not appropriate, and I can easily sabotage every relationship that I'm in. Do you know why? I don't know. I was asking you, do you know why? <laughs> Let's see if we can spend in, in the next half hour what I spent the last two weeks discovering. Here's some realities. Some people disconnect when they're going through traumatic events. I, I moved into a place of great compassion this week, and I'd like to stay there for people that have life just punch them in the gut. Losses, traumatic events. And, and so many people, I, I found myself that when I'm experiencing or have experienced a traumatic event, that experience causes me to want to hide. It causes me to want to withdraw. It causes me to want to disconnect. It causes me to want to not show up. I thought I was gonna throw up all morning this morning before bringing this message to the nine o'clock service, and I literally did throw, no, sorry, before I came in here. That's the reason I was a little bit late coming in here. Why? Because here's, here's the deal. Learning self-love may not necessarily be pretty. Inappropriate self-love is always pretty. I 
I have been through traumatic events in my life, and if my experience, if my experiences of the past dictated what I was going to experience here, then I'm not coming out here today. Because my experiences of abandonment and rejection and that you're not good enough and you'll never be good enough and that, you know, why don't you just go eat your Captain Crunch fatty? Uh, look, at your, look at your big glasses. Look how stupid you look. Look how your hair all curls up. Look at the zits all over your face. Look how no girls like you. See, traumatic events will want to make you, as an adult, protect that four-year-old that got abused, rejected, and abandoned his whole life. So what do you do to protect that one. Well, you think you're loving them by secluding them, by putting walls up, by protecting them, by becoming angry with other people, by standing up and not allowing to be abandoned or rejected or have people walk away from you or, or dislike you or that you're not good enough, that you'll never be good enough ever again. So you stand up and you fight, but it's not for your manhood you're fighting for. You're fighting for a four-year-old that you've had to protect your whole life because he's been so wounded and was never allowed to grow up because he wasn't loved appropriately. Now, I don't know if that's you, but I've been hearing from the Lord. This sounds, this sounds harsh, but it's not, if you, if you understand the context. Scott, I'm inviting you to grow up. And he wasn't talking to the 56-year-old man he was talking to, will you allow your four-year-old that's inside of you that you've been protecting your whole life to grow up? How are you going to do that, Scott? You're going to learn how to self-love. Yay, see, and so I'm all grown up now. That's, that's all it took. No, because it's a process. I, I've got to learn by, let me just give you some, let's go on. I've known rejection, so since I've known rejection and I expect rejection, I expect people to walk away from me and I expect people to reject me because I'm not cute, because I'm not nice, because I'm not talented, because I'm not gifted, because I can't perform well enough, because I haven't done enough. Whatever that rejection is, if, if I feel that way, if, then if I'm rejecting myself, then I put out this air that others are going to reject me too. Yeah. How you feel about yourself is how you'll attract other people to feel about you. This is why this is so important. That's why everything hangs on this stuff. I think this is a root cause, not just in my life. I think this is a root cause in our culture. Why we have so much abuse is because they think they deserve to be abused. They think, I say, I don't think, I don't think anybody should be around me because I don't want to be around me. Why? Because I don't really love myself. So if I don't love myself, knowing myself, how are you going to love me? But see, we've all believed the lies. We've all believed people's opinions. We've all believed the experiences and the trauma. And when you've been victimized, we've all believed those things. But they're just facts. They're just facts. They're not the truth. Hi. I'm only talking about me, so no one should feel anything here. My encounter with his love should inspire me to actually look in the mirror and love what I'm seeing. However, however, I don't love what I'm seeing. I have an encounter with God. I'm on the mountain, and then I look, but I want to share with you something. Here's the reason. is because I'm not really looking at me. I'm looking at the wrong image of me. See, I'm not looking at who I am. I'm not looking at my identity. I'm looking at my failures. I'm looking at my shortcomings. I'm looking at my behaviors. I'm looking at my attitude or my lack of attitude. I'm looking at my character or my lack of character. And I'm trying to love something that shouldn't be loved. So I'm not fulfilled in that love process. The world tries to tell us, well, you should love who you are completely. You should love your failures. You should love your shortcomings. You should love your lack. You should love all those things, all those things. I just want to tell you, I just want to tell you, that is just a complete lie. How can I say that? Because my behaviors don't identify me. My identity should affect my behaviors, and when they're not, then I am looking at something that is not the true image of who I am. Please don't love the false image. I actually want that old man to die. 
So I love you. I love you. I love, I'm trying to kill you. I love you. I'm trying. No, no, no. I want that thing to die inside of me. So take up your cross and follow me. Well, what is, the, what is the cross meant for? It's an instrument of death to kill that thing that God's trying to kill in you. So what do I do? I die. It's baptism to the old man, and I'm raised into new life. It's called baptism. And, it, and I like to say it's not a one-time event. It's a lifestyle. Paul said this, I die daily. Well, you don't want to die to the things that you love. You won't ever let them die. See how quiet it got? So, Scott, your connections will begin to be connected. It's brilliant. When real healing begins to happen. I will know that I'm genuinely healing when I feel connections beginning to reconcile. The outward connections will actually begin to happen. I'll know them because why? When I begin to feel safe with myself, then others will be able to feel safe with me. It's true, and I know this because I've spent two weeks figuring it out. The other 56 years, we don't care about those. Listen, Listen, I, I know this sounds crazy. I know this sounds crazy. But if one encounter can change your, inter- your eternal life, one encounter can change your temporal life. It can. And it should. And your actions and your response to it will actually, your actions and your response to it will actually say whether you believe that that encounter was real or not. If, if, if after 12 years, that woman with the issues of blood came, she said, listen, Listen, and Jesus didn't touch her. She touched him. It's like, it's like, it's like, listen, how, how, what's this have to do with me? If God wanted me healed, he'd heal me. No, 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 no. It is all based upon the fact of, yes, I, I've determined God wants Scott healed. God wants that boy healed. I've determined that, and I am not stopping until I touch the hem of his garment. So, so, because here's the deal, here's the deal. When you're on a road and when you're on a path and you know where you're going, listen, our architects have done a great job of making every exit beautiful. I noticed that on the way home. Everybody ever notice you're driving around, wow, that exit's really nice. That exit's really nice and that exit's really, well, what does exit mean? It means you're getting off of something that you're on. Can I propose to you something? If you don't know where you're going, you'll take any exit off. And I don't want good exits anymore in my life. I don't want band-aids anymore in my life. I want to get to where I'm going, and I I won't want to be distracted by what is good. I want to be only taking the exit that is appropriate for my life to fulfill my destiny purpose and my journey to get me there. Enough of the good exits. Enough of the good opinions. Enough of the good facts. I only want to take the one that's appropriate for my journey. Does that make sense? So, But here's the deal. If I don't know where I'm going, then I'll take any exit. This is a reality I had to understand something. I am safe inside of walls where I protect myself from others. But I wasn't created to be disconnected behind walls, even though I'm safe. I'm not created. I am created for community. I am created to be connected. And I am created to be vulnerable. And I'm created to be real. And I'm created to be open. And I'm created to be honest. And I'm created to be okay. Until I'm okay. And so are you. And see, I can have great grace. And I can have great patience with you. With you. (laughs) I might talk the rest of the day that way. I can have that for you if I'm willing to have that for me. See, I can lessen my expectations. See, I think that, I, I see, I'm this guy. I think, I think everyone owes me something. I don't know if that's you, but, but the only way I can ever be hurt or offended or disappointed is because you owed me something that you didn't give me. But here's the deal. I only do that to you 
because I do that to me. I feel like I owe myself a better life. I feel I owe myself this. I owe myself that. When I let that go and say, listen, I don't owe, listen, I don't owe. Why? Because I have understood in my self-love that he has loved me and adored me and seen me as so valuable. I don't owe me anything to actually gain my value. And neither do you. Yeah. Another reality I had to face that I'm worthy in the eyes of my king. I'm worthy of connection. See, I, 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 I actually expect you to not want to be in my life. I actually expect you to not want to love me. I actually expect you to not want to do life with me. I actually expect you to move away from me and to create a safe space between us. Why? Because I want to do the same thing with me. Here's one thing I found out. I can't get rid of me. Everywhere I go, I still keep showing up. So I am, I'm at this point in my life. If I, I Listen, I, I can't get rid of me, and, and she can't get rid of me. So the only hope for us is that I actually become who I really am so I can actually love who I really am. See, now that's a journey. That's a destination that we all can get on. And I would like to propose to you that when I'm on my journey of identity and discovering who I am, I'm going to have a lot of people that might want to ride along with me. And so will you. No one wants to go on a detour. Nobody wants to go off here, go over there. What about now? There's an uncertainty of not knowing where you're going. And the, and the Lord has really been dealing with me. you got to set your trajectory and stay on course and stop being distracted by everyone else's thoughts about who you are. That's not mean to them. That's a reality for me. It's nobody's fault that I'm at the point in my life that I'm at right now. It's only my fault. I'm responsible. Why? Because I get the free will that he gave me as a gift to choose this day who I'm going to serve. But so do you. This should be. Yay. Yay for all of us, man. So here's some helpful declarations. Now that I had those realities I had to deal with, some healthy declarations I've been, I've been looking at deeply, deeply. I, I, listen, if you're going to try to discover things about yourself, don't stop at the first sign of resistance. If you're going to really want to discover things about yourself, be willing to go deep in the discovery of that. Before you begin to develop something, go deep into something because you don't want to develop it prematurely or inappropriately. Oh, well, here's the issue, so I'll just start working on that. And let's, go, let's go ask the seven to nine questions we need to in a certain area to make sure we go deep enough so we're not just cutting off the surface things, but you're going into the root issues of things so you can actually weed them out, pull them out, so that those things don't grow up anymore. You don't want them growing up. You don't want those things growing up anymore in your life. If, if you don't want a root of bitterness growing up in your life, then just don't cut off the unforgiveness. Go right for the root of bitterness. Be rooted and grounded in love. If there's anything else there that isn't generated and motivated by love, let's get rid of it. I'm getting rid of it. I'm getting, I'm done with it. I have paid a high price to discover this. I'm not stopping till it's not only discovered, but I actually come up with something that I can develop and I can actually deploy it in my life. Manny and I talked about this later. I want to multiply that which is worth multiplying. Okay. So Romans 12, 2 says, if I change the way that I think, Scott, 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 stop thinking that way. I got, I got hurt by somebody at, at iMatter. I was just busting things out, and I heard a comment made towards me like, you're not doing good enough. You're not doing enough. You didn't do what I wanted you to do. And I started to get offended in that, and I literally, I literally had to go like this. <sighs> Grow up. Why is that bothering you? You have no idea where he's at right now. You have no idea what he's going through. You have no idea what he's experiencing. You have no idea what he's thinking. Why do you always go to thinking? I've been telling you not to think the worst about other people. Stop thinking the worst about yourself. And if other people don't see you the way that is appropriate, that's okay. It is okay. Why? Because we only all see in part. We only all see in part. So it's okay. It's okay for people to make mistakes. 
You know that. It's, it is okay for them to make... I know I hate it when they make them towards us, don't you? So I have to change the way that I think at my core or I will never change my life. Never change my life. So if I change the way I think, why? Because the universe stops somewhere from revolving around me. I really hated that moment. <laughs> but, but God won't allow anybody or anything, including you, to be at the center of anything except for him. I, I can give good counsel to others. You ever have a problem receiving your own counsel to yourself? So then, this is the beauty, because this is what he showed me. Hey, Scott, you make me first. I'll make you my priority. <laughs> what? A stinking exchange. I'm going to make you my priority, and I'm going to benefit you with my love and my relationship. Oh, but then I get all of the benefits of heaven and you as a return. I don't think I can outgive God in any capacity, whether it be love, time, money, effort, anything. So I'm going to bring my, my best game to him, and I get his best game. My, my worst game, his worst game and my best game is still a better exchange. Does that, does that seem like a good deal to anybody but me? Just do this for me then. Just go this if you think that's... Love your neighbors as yourself. Oh, here's my problem. I am so, so, so sorry that you have not felt loved by me. But I'm going to ask for grace. I'm going to ask for forgiveness. I'm going to ask for mercy because it wasn't your problem and it wasn't because of you. It was because I really didn't like myself. And see, I... I, I I learned how to be all these things without going through any schooling at all. But I have been put to severe schooling, and you will too, to actually how to learn, learn how to love appropriately by learning how to love yourself appropriately. See, because appropriate love actually allows you to grow up into all things Christ, not to stay a little child and be offended by everything in the world. A father's love allows you, because you're so protected, you're so adored, you're so, you're so looked after, you're so wanted, you are, he never leaves you, he never forsakes you, he doesn't abandon you, he's with you always, even in the darkest moments, and in that context of that safe, healthy place, you can grow up without being afraid. Then I, the old man, I don't have to protect the little boy anymore. Why? Because the little boy is strong. Because he grew up in a safe, healthy environment provided by a father who loves him absolutely and unconditionally. That little boy doesn't have to prove himself for anything. He's loved without any proof. Yes. That's us, man. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I've been trying to be killed since I remember, since I can remember but I think that's all of us. I think there's been something that's wanted to kill our true identity, and religion has assisted in it. Rebellion has assisted in it. But there's a place that we can run. There's a place that we can strive. There's a place that we can drive. There's a place that we can journey on that actually, actually is a place where, where, where it is life and love giving. I just didn't know that existed. In the middle of the darkest storm, how is it that Jesus, in the middle of the craziest storm, how is it that Jesus could, could understand that peace was his greatest weapon because he spent so much time being adored by the Father? I think this is the missing link. I think it's what culture, I think it's what you, I think it's what I, we have been looking for, and the Bible says this crazy thing that they will know that you are me when you love one another. But you know next week we're gonna talk about that, but none of us can love one another appropriately unless we love ourselves appropriately because he appropriately loved us first. So Genesis, I had to understand what he said about me in Genesis. I was made, I, 
Scott Lomaster, and you can say this for you. I'm saying it about me because I need to say this about me. I was made in his image, and I was made in his likeness. So anything that doesn't look like him, I can't love. Anything that doesn't sound like him, anything that, 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 doesn't, that doesn't, listen, I don't have to love the unkindness in my life. I don't have to love the brokenness. I don't have to love the victim. I don't love that mentality. I don't have to love that person. What I do have to love, because whatever I love is what's gonna grow. So whatever I give my affection to, whatever I give my protection to, whatever I give my focus to, that's what's gonna increase. And so, so what's, wrong, what's wrong on the outside is a direct representation of what's wrong on the inside. But if I can make what's raw, right on the inside, it will come out to be what's right on the outside. I don't, did, did anybody follow me on that? So I'm made in his image, thank you. See what's coming out right now. Hi, Rick. Oh, he didn't take the clue. Told you. <laughs> I'm made in his image and his likeness, and we, a revelation I had to learn, people, the world, People around me will stop hating me when I stop hating myself. So I'm not allowed. But see, see if, if I, if I, how can I say I love God and, and then hate myself or man? People around me, how can I do it? Why? Because we're made in his image and likeness. And man, he's made in his image or likeness. See, I can't look at people as a mistake. I can't look at me as a mistake. Why? Because God didn't make any mistakes. He made us beautifully, wonderfully. He actually formed me. He formed Scott. He formed me. God, you formed me. You made me. You designed me. You fashioned my wife, but you formed me. <laughs> you formed me in my mom. You knew me. You formed me in my mom's womb. You didn't let me come out. You formed me in darkness. You formed me for nine months in darkness. You formed me where I wasn't seen. I wasn't heard. I might have been felt once in a while, but I wasn't known. And you formed me in that dark place, and you're still forming me in those dark places because you want to birth something that is absolutely beautiful that the world will be impacted by. So I'm all right going into a dark place as long as I know that you're forming me because what you did yesterday, you'll do it again tomorrow because you're the same yesterday today and forever you are the same you are the same you don't lie so no man ever hated his own flesh but he nourishes it you won't be cared for unless I'm willing to care for myself you won't be protected unless I'm willing to protect myself you won't you won't be loved unless I'm willing to love myself now I'm not saying you won't be loved by somebody you won't be protected by, I'm saying from my life I cannot give to you what I'm not experiencing myself. And I have for too long, I've been willing to put myself at risk. I have for too long been willing to put my family at risk. I have for too long been willing to put you at risk for the sake of a call and a mission that he's placed on my life. And here's the reality is, everything is laid down, but everything, here's the deal. All assignments are given, but the timing and the places and the purposes are found in community. We've gotta be willing to die to our own aspirations, even the promise, if you would. And it, 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 whenever the promise giver becomes less important than the promise, we're out of appropriate position. That's right. That's right. That's right. But those kids of mine, they were a promise from God. But your kids are not more important than the promise giver. Right. But, I, but that, that guy, he was, a, he was a gift from God. He's not more important than the one who gave him to you. Do you understand? And that's when we get out of whack. That's when we get out of line. And here's, and here's the deal. Sometimes our own self is more important. The one who breathed life into us. I've wanted to criticize myself so much because I'm not disciplined enough. I just, I'm just going to give you this. I'm not even sure if I believe it yet. But I'd like you to consider this. Nothing in heaven is about discipline. Everything in heaven is about delight. I don't want to be disciplined to love you, God. 
I don't want to be disciplined to love me. I don't want to be disciplined to love those people. I don't want to be disciplined to read more. I want to move because I've encountered such a great love that I've got to spend time with you. I've got to spend time in the Word. I, I want to love these people. I want to love myself. I want to do what's right. I want to please you. See, out of delight, everything issues forth. I want to tell you that I don't think Jesus would have done what he did based upon discipline alone. It had to come out of the Father's, the, the delight that the Father had in him and his delight that he had in the Father. That's the life I want. If I'm going to be disciplined, I want it out of a life of delight. Ephesians says, all that he does in us is designed to make us a mature church for his pleasure. Until when? Until we become a source of praise to him. Until we are glorious and radiant and beautiful and holy. Until we are without fault or flaw. He wouldn't invest in us if that wasn't the goal. How many are glad that you found, men, how many are glad that you found that good wife? Raise your hand. Every guy who has a wife better have their hand up right now. You are in major, major trouble. I don't see that hand. I don't. <laughs> All right, Bob Rundle, I don't see your hand up. Jane, there we go. All right. I want to propose to you that God didn't wait to find a good wife. He's producing one. That should all give you a lot of stinking hope. He didn't take you because you qualified. He didn't call you because you qualified. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't invite you because you qualified. He made you. He formed you. He knows your potential. He knows what your DNA is. He knows in, you, what you're in seed form, but he invites you to a place of a finished work, a finished bride. And it, when he looks at you that way, then he can invest in you because he's saying this, I'm going to continue to invest in you so that you become mature, so that you become a source of praise, so that you become glorious, radiant, beautiful, holy, that, sh that you're without fault and you're without flaw. That's where we're going. We've got some lies that we've got to deal with. Husbands have the obligation of loving and caring for their wives the same way they love and care for their own bodies. For to love your wife is to actually love your own self. No one, say no one, abuses his own body but pampers it, serving and satisfying its needs. That's exactly what Christ does for his church. Scott, this is what he said to me because this is our language. He told me to shut up. Scott, what is your self-talk creating in your world? What I began to say was whatever I was declaring with my words is what I was experiencing in my world. And I began to shape my world around me. I used to, I, 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 not used to, I've been, because it's only been two weeks. Um, I, I've been, I, 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 this whole thing, like I, whatever's coming, why, you, why do you want to speak such things into existence? Don't you know that there's power in your tongue? Don't you know that there's life and death in your tongue? Don't you, aren't you aware of the strength of your words? Your words have got to, you've got to understand that your words are creating your world. So stop creating a world that's the wrong world to create. Is this for anyone else but me? Because you guys should just come and listen to me preach to myself sometime. Self-love is actually about creating boundaries about who you want to be. But if you don't know who you want to be, you'll never create the self-boundaries for yourself. You'll allow anything and anyone in, and you can't. You can't. Or you'll become what their words speak over you rather than your words that are aligned with his words about who you really are, but you're not going to be able to speak the appropriate words until you know what his words are about you. Yeah. Here's the benefits. Closing up with this. Yay. I don't have to throw up anymore. Seven benefits or seven ways you'll know whether you're loving yourself appropriately. The first one is this. 
Rejection is losing its ability to hurt me anymore. There's some people that have come into your life that have brought you to where you're at, but those people may not be the people that will take you to where you're going. And it's okay. It's okay. But you can't live, listen, if you're going to live and die on the praises of men and women, the that of boys from men and women in your life, then you will die by their criticism. And I'm tired of dying at man's words. I want to live by every word that proceeds out of my father's mouth. And that's not your fault. That's my fault. I've given people too close of a place on the inside of me where there's ownership on the inside of me that only belongs to him being Lord of my life, not other people. Not situations, not circumstances. Father, what are you speaking over me? I've had too high of opinion of man's opinion and not high enough of opinion of God's. Man, that's just me. That's just me. But it might be you. Maybe this will help you. I hope this helps you. Holy Spirit, I hope. If I'm saying it wrong, please let them hear what's right and adjust it and correct it because you're awesome. And I look like you. You'll know that you're self-loving because you're not going to be afraid of a challenge. I think Esther had it right. I think it was Esther. If I die, if I die, I die. But at least I die trying. If I if I die, I die at least, but at least I'm doing it out of a heart that I want to obey you. You know, I you know, poor Peter. All the other disciples are going, look at Peter, you're so stupid, getting out of that boat and walking on the water, and now look at you, you're sinking. Can I just say something? I'll take Peter all day long over the scaredy cats that are in the boat that aren't willing to go out and try to pursue Jesus anyways. And not, not, I'm not the only one, here's the deal. You may not want to applaud that, you may not, that's okay, you don't, I don't need your, right, because I don't care about rejection. But here's the deal, here's the deal. I'm getting out of the boat and I'm going to where Jesus is and whoever wants to go with me can go, that's okay. I'm not making you get out of the boat. You stay in there and safe. But I promise you, it's people like Peter that he builds his church upon. Look at stupid Peter, right? Stupid Peter. They're there, he cuts the guy's ears off and then goes, oh, oh, probably shouldn't have done that. And Jesus goes, oh, Peter, I gotta fix your mess again. And he fixes his mess. But uh, listen. He looks at Peter and says, you knucklehead, it's your kind of personality. It's your kind of commitment. It's your kind of, it's your kind of like all in attitude that I'm going to build my church upon. Why? Because faith can't be spelled without risk. It's, ah, listen, I'm not, don't, don't justify stupidity. I'm not talking justify stupidity. I got enough stupidity to all of you in here. But what I'm talking is when, when your stupidity comes out, and it costs you something, learn from it, but don't quit. So, I'm becoming conscious of things I wanna spend my time on, the exits. Others of people's opinions, they're holding less value. This is what I really like a lot. I didn't think I'd like this one, but I like this one. I'm less critical of other people. I'm like, I'm getting, I'm getting, I, like, I'm, I'm okay. But the reason I'm okay with your lack is because I'm okay with my lack. I don't love my lack, I don't love your lack, but I'm okay with it, why? Because I love me so I can love you and I don't have expectations on you and I don't have expectations on me that are not his appropriate expectations. Yes? Okay. I'm being pleased with results that I didn't think I'd be pleased with. And? In the midst of darkness, when you're being refined and all that kind of stuff, one thing good about it, when there's resistance coming towards you, when people are saying, you're not this, you're not that, you're not this, when your identity is being challenged, it's in those dark places, when you move into self-love that you can actually say, I actually know exactly who I wanna be. And when you have that, not cockiness, when you have that boldness, then, then we can say, that all the gates of hell cannot prevail against one who has actually been impacted and know who they are in Christ. And I will tell you, all the spiritual world will always want to challenge, is this really who you are? 
you think you're this. Are you really that? Let's test that. Let's, are you really this? Are you really that? Though none go with me, yet I will follow is a person who loves himself well enough, has a boldness and a confidence from the Holy Spirit that they can actually go to places that no one else is willing to go. And even if no one else goes with them, Father, the only place I'll go, even if I have to go alone, is towards you. But if you don't love yourself, you're afraid. You're scared. You'll, you'll, you'll be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. But a person who has experienced the love of God, who loves themselves well, they have the ability to see clearly who they really are, and they're not affected by who people think they are anymore. It's a good quality to have. So two, two points. I'm not, not going to go down. Gonna, oh, three points. Self-love is unsatisfying if you're looking at the wrong self. If you're gonna love somebody, don't let it be wrong. Here's the truth and tension. We're made in God's image versus sinner, broken, victim, wounded, lack. We have got to reconcile this thing first, the identity, who we are as self, because our, our identity is found in Christ. He has exchanged beauty for ashes. So stop looking or loving the ashes of your life. Look at the beauty that God has created in you and for you. Challenge number two is God does not want you to love or accept your sins. He wanted us to come as we are, but it does not mean for us to stay there. He always will accept you. But love, see, love, loving the little boy, here's the deal. Love doesn't leave you where you are. Love takes you to your purpose, destiny, and compels you to grow up into all things. That is Christ Jesus. We have got to be willing to be loved and properly enough that we grow up. <laughs> I feel like T.G. Jakes. Obviously you don't watch T.G. Jakes. Okay, good. <clears throat> I found this, I found this encouraging. That I have to love myself by denying myself in order for me to find myself. Because the true me is found in the resurrection of the dead old me. And same with you. you it is unsatisfactory for me to love something that I hate. I don't want to be unkind. That's got to die. I don't want to be unloving. That's got to die. I don't want to be angry. That's got to die. Especially the sinning part of the anger. I want to be passionate. That's got to live. I want to be loving. That's got to live. I want to be like my father. That's got to live. But anything contrary to my identity that I was created in has got to go. I've got to stop loving my brokenness and start loving my fixedness. That's a good word, Pastor Scott. Thank you. I brought my own encouragement today because I love myself. Number three. Beauty is the Bible has recast what loving yourself looks like. The Bible talks about being lovers of self versus lovers of God, but the self acceptance of God's kids is not an act of striving to love myself more. I just love me. I just love me. I just love me. I just love me. I love me. I just gotta 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 love me. No! What I gotta do is I gotta see who I am. I gotta see myself how he sees me. You gotta see yourself how he sees you. We've gotta begin to see ourselves the way that God sees us because the automatic thing that happens is I will love what he loves because what he has created is beautiful. What he is establishing is beautiful. What he is doing is good. So begin to love the person that he sees you to be, not what man has told you you are, not what circumstances have told you you are, not what failures or behaviors have told you. See yourself and love yourself for who you truly are. Because if, you're, if we wanna look inward and don't see ourselves as in Christ, then we're attempting to love a false image. And any false image that we love is an idol. It's true. Self-love must begin with the truth of who we really are and we must let go and we must let die the one that we thought we were, but we're not. So if, if this meant anything to any of you today, 
Can you just can you just lift up a shout of praise to the Lord and say thank you for the freedom, thank you for the bondage that we're walking out of, thank you for your goodness, thank you for rooting things out of us, thank you for setting things up, thank you for telling us who we are, thank you for your identity, thank you for your hope, thank you for your passion, thank you for what you're doing, Father, to us, through us, and for our whole culture. Set this culture free in Jesus' name. Set them free in Jesus' name. Let's lift up a shout one more time, can we?